so what would happen if a bunch of GIs from the Japanese army were to be sent back in time 400 years right in the middle of the feudal wars that led up to the formation of the Tokugawa Shogunate? It's definitely an insane concept and this movie is exactly that. So let me first just say this isn't a very good movie, but it has its moments. And the only way I could really talk about it kind of has to do with today's date. Yes, it's April Fool's Day. It's probably the worst day of the year to be on the internet. It's an entire day where all the news can just be disregarded as a lie. Ever wonder who thought that was a good thing to have? But April Fool's is also a day that we could talk about fun stuff, like G.I. Samurai. So first off, the film stars the legendary actor Sonny Chiba, and I picked up this really cheap box set, the four film Chiba box set. I got it from Amazon, and so far all these films have been worth it. Highly recommend it. So basically, Chiba plays Lieutenant Yoshiaka Iba. He's the leader of a Japanese ground self-defense force squadron and they accidentally go back in time and they arrive in feudal Japan and eventually they join forces with a power-hungry samurai planning to become the country's next ruler and thankfully the writers didn't try to just come up with this super scientific reason on why they went back in time it pretty much just happens they just go back in time no questions however the time travel scene itself is actually pretty well done, especially for the 70s. And it's got kind of that 70s trippy feel to it. Actually, this whole movie has sort of that 70s feel, for better or worse. You know, you get the ultra silliness of that time, especially the music. And speaking of the music, like, you get blues, country, folk, rock, and none of it belongs here. And every time they use it, it is sort of unintentionally funny, and it always feels out of place. Basically, it's bad. So the plot pretty much goes in the direction that you would expect from a title like this. You know, the fish out of water, what is this flying metal object, and you get the whole discussion about whether or not we're better off in this time period. But what makes this film even worth viewing at all is definitely its over-the-top final battle. Samurai versus GI, I mean that's what we all came for. and. Somehow it delivers. <laughs> the fight itself spans more than a half hour, and it's probably the best kind of 70s over the top action war stuff. Not only is it relentless, it's also exhausting in pace and length. It's also just an amazing mismatch of styles and techniques that you can only see from a premise like G.I. Samurai. I mean, where do you get the chance to see tanks, ninjas, and shurikens, and helicopters, and samurai in the same shot? Also, just watching Sonny Chiba and his G.I. just massacring hundreds of extras with Guns, mortars, grenades, machine guns, tanks. It's amazing. It's definitely one of the most unique battle sequences probably ever filmed of all time. And it doesn't drag at all despite its great length. If you're going to see this movie, just watch it for this scene. 
The mismatch of styles is one part Jidai Geki epic of Kurosawa Kagamusha in a way, while the other is more of a western action and kind of gets into more of the war movies from the 70s. There's some stylish touches, you know, you get some good slow motion shots. <laughs> Japanese cinema has always been influenced by, you know, westerns and other Hollywood films, and of course vice versa. And G.I. Samurai just turns the whole East versus West, and it just puts it together into one fun film. And the filmmakers, for better or worse, just take the whole thing serious. There still is some tongue-in-cheek stuff, but it doesn't really try to do the whole so bad that it's good thing, which is probably for the best. The budget itself is probably pretty big. As you could tell, there's just hundreds of extras and tanks, costumes. And it's kind of weird that they put this much money into such a weird concept. The cast also deserves some mentioning. Of course, you get Sonny Chiba. We all love him. You also get Azao Natsuyagi, played in Goyoken. And apparently, Hiroyuki Sanada's in this, though I didn't really recognize him. I think he might have had a small part. So as a whole, I think it's a fun concept. That's pretty much it. It's got a couple of good moments. You know, you get to see Samurai versus Modern. That's always fun. But as a whole, I don't think it's enough to make up for its long two-hour length. The middle of the film definitely drags. There's plenty of pointless subplots. And the movie must have been a moderate success at the box office, considering they even made a remake in 2005 titled Samurai Commando Mission 1549. Anyway, I don't think this is really worth buying. Instead, I recommend you get the Sunny Chiba 4 film box set just because it's so cheap. You could also watch this free on YouTube. Anyway, I thought this would just be a fun video. You know, enjoy your April 1st. Try not to get scammed too hard. It's kind of a day you just have to not take serious. And like always, thanks for watching.